Hey everybody, it's Trevor here with the channel where every day is range day and in this week's video we're going to be doing an unboxing and some first impressions on a couple pieces of Kydex gear kindly sent in from A&I Manufacturing. Let's check it out. Now before we get started, A&I Manufacturing is a smaller holster company based out of Georgia, I believe, and they were kind enough to reach out to us and send a couple products in for review and testing. They did send us what's in this box that we're going to be talking about today, but we weren't paid for a good review, we weren't paid for the products or exposure or anything like that. They reached out for us to do some testing and reviews, so that's what we're going to do. And as always, we're going to remain unbiased throughout our testing and review process. Now let's get into this. I have yet to open this box, but they did reach out to us and talked about sending a couple different models of concealed carry style holsters. If you visit their website, which I'll throw a couple links up on the screen for later, they primarily carry inside waistband appendix style holsters. You can wear them three o'clock and other places, of course, but mostly it's inside waistband for now. Outside waistband looks like it's coming soon. Of course, they make all Kydex products and they have sent us a couple different things. And we'll go over each of them briefly here and then do some top-down stuff to get a better look. First out of the box is a couple holsters made for the Glock 19. They sent us two different appendix style holsters, which we see here and here. One of these, I think, has a concealment wedge built in and one of them doesn't. But they sent us two of those, both for the Glock 19. And then it also looks like we have a smaller magazine caddy also for the Glock. Got a little envelope in here and a return envelope, which we probably won't be needing. Inside our envelope, we have a nice little note from Aaron and Ian, who we've been working with at A&I Manufacturing. Thanks again, guys, for the opportunity to do this with us. Then they also included just a little highlight of some of the features of their product, which, of course, I'll get into throughout the video. And again, just a couple small tidbits about A&I Manufacturing. They're a smaller company that's newer to the holster industry, maybe been making holsters for about five years or so, it seems, out of Georgia. And a kind of cool note, it looks like Range Day here is one of the first channels on YouTube to be having this sort of opportunity to work with them and test their products. So we're excited to give them a try and see how they are. That being said, let's start tearing into some of these bags. I'll just grab one of these uh, appendix style holsters first. Again, these are all Kydex with a concealment wing and some claws for my Glock 19. Just a little bit of details about the instructions, warranty, and use certifications. I should point out that all of their products do have a limited lifetime warranty for parts and manufacturing defects, things like that. So that's always nice to have. And let's see everything we got in this box here. We do have, of course, the Kydex holster. This looks like just an appendix one without the concealment wedge on the back. I have an additional concealment wing on the side. It's actually a little bit thicker, which we can look at, which is kind of nice depending on what kind of belt setup you're running. And here you can see a good look at it. This course comes in black and looks pretty similar to half of what a tier one concealed or tier X arm sidecar would look at. These type designs maybe not be as rigid in the middle, but with enough clips, they shouldn't move around too much on your belt. And then maybe you can space them a little bit differently on a belt to see how they would fit. A couple quick notes about these appendix style holsters. They do have a concealment claw or a wing here on the side, which is definitely recommended to help push this against your belt into your body a bit more. They do have a pair of metal clips on here as opposed to some of the plastic snaps that I see. And these are a set of clips that come from Discrete Carry Concepts and they use all of these hardware pieces for their clips on all the holsters at ANI. The finish does look pretty nice, has their logo in there which looks pretty neat. And I'll be interested to see how the metal clips do. They do have sort of a lip on the inside just like the plastic ones. They're a nice sort of springy metal piece that looks like it should keep pretty well against the belt or probably even fabric with this little barb piece in here. Again, we'll take a closer look here in a minute. Overall, the fit and finish of the holster does look pretty nice. It's molded very neatly, nice clean lines, smooth interior, good looking fasteners, things like that. It looks like a pretty nice and clean product. Now to test fitment here on the Glock 19, which is of course clear. It snaps right in there and does fit pretty good. The retention's pretty tight right now out of the box. It'll probably adjust some, or you could use the screws on the back like other type holsters. And it does fit pretty nice. It does have what I would consider a high sweat guard, which might dig into you a little bit more if you're bending over without the gun in there. But I don't really count a high sweat guard against anything. It comes up to your slide, and whenever you're leaning over, the slide's gonna dig into you or the sweat guard. So it's kind of up to personal preference at that point. And I should note that this particular Glock 19 does have an optic and suppressor height sights. They are wonderfully compatible with this type holster. Sights fit perfectly with even a little bit more room to spare if you have pretty tall sights on there. 
plenty of room for all kinds of optics here on the top of the slide. Another feature to bring out is it does have an open bottom. So if your firearm has something like a compensator, a threaded barrel, odds are it'll probably fit in here. Setting that aside, we'll get into another one here, which is I believe the same style appendix inside waistband holster, but it does have, yep, a concealment wedge actually molded into the Kydex. This is the first time I've seen something actually molded into the holster itself. Usually I'll buy the foam wedges from Tier 1 Concealed and they just kind of stick onto a holster. But this one does it for you. Kind of an interesting take on it that's already built in. I definitely value a wedge in itself, but I wonder how the comfort will be because it's actually made out of a more rigid Kydex material instead of a softer, squishier foam that'll mold your body a bit more. I'm sure it'll conceal just fine just looking at it compared to some of the Tier 1 Concealed wedges. It looks like it's in the right spot and it's right about the right size. Nevertheless, I think it's a pretty interesting feature that shows some pretty cool thinking by the guys at A&I. Wedges are pretty nice to have in general, and it's nice to kind of have it built in instead of having an add-on. Maybe it's not as customizable as something you can stick anywhere which way, like the foam wedges with the double-sided tape, but we'll see how it does. Definitely an interesting factor and props for the innovation. I, I can appreciate that for sure. Again, it has the same nice metal clips from Discrete Carry Concepts. And it looks like both of these actually have what they call it a sort of canted block, which is the mono block of these clips but we'll take a closer look at it too, that where the clips actually mount right here, there's different thicknesses. So this also helps promote that sort of tilting of the wing there. That's usually the bigger issue with concealment. And the more you can push this piece this way into your body, the better you're gonna be from a printing perspective. And last but not least is a small mag caddy that ANI also makes, hybrid kydex and clip design. This is definitely something I was interested about when I was looking at their website. I didn't see this on the website, but they did say that they make it because whenever I'm carrying something concealed, especially in the appendix, I do like to have a backup magazine. Of course, this isn't afforded by a one-piece setup like this, which is why I usually lean something like a tier one concealed. Now they have this little concealed magazine caddy. It is pretty low profile, and it's definitely a must have, at least for me, to have that spare mag. Again, it's a nice Kydex piece, two retention adjustment screws on the side, and it's just a solid piece of Kydex, again, with a metal clip on the side. I'm interested to see how these do on a belt. I'm sure they'll do fine. There looks to be plenty of thickness there for a core belt or a next belt or anything like that if you have one of those. But this little barb piece that we can take a look at on the bottom looks like it'd be pretty interesting for just biting on fabric. I'll be interested to see how they work with different types of material. We'll take a look at it as well up close here in a minute. It looks like all the fit and finish of all these products is good overall. Definitely no concerns from a quality standpoint outright. And lots of interesting features like these metal clips with the barbs and particularly this built-in concealment wedge on this Glock 19 appendix holster. But now we'll take just a closer look at some of these features that I've called out from a little top-down view. So let's check that out. All right guys, so here we are with just a little top-down footage of this gear from A&I Manufacturing just so you can get a closer look at some of the details I've been talking about. Again, we'll just start with the holsters here. This is the wedge version, which is identical to the other non-wedge version, which I've seen here. Minus, of course, the concealment wedge on the back side. That being said, the first thing my attention is drawn to on here is, of course, the metal clips. a and Manufacturing, the company logo on here, it looks pretty nice. And these clips are a product from Discreet Carry Concepts. This is their monoblock style, so this is a one single piece here. And they are heat-treated spring steel, which is interesting because I've never had metal clips on an appendix holster before. They've always been some sort of flexible plastic. Also, notably thicker than these is what they usually are. There are a couple adjustment holes in here that you can use to adjust the ride height of your setup based on what you want to do. They come with recommended defaults from the factory, and that's what we can see here. Another cool interesting tidbit about these particular clips is this little metal barb you can kind of see on the inside of them here. This is sort of like a double J-hook locking mechanism so that they're held in place one by the springiness of the clip itself. If your belt's on here, it'll be in between here. And when you pull up, it's just gonna keep pulling on your belt. It'd be a lot harder to get it off of somebody if that was what was happening to you. So it's a cool little detail here. Again, the clips look to be put together pretty nice. The finish is pretty nice. And overall, I'm interested to see how the metal will compare to the plastic clips that I'm used to. Also talking about the clips, we can see what they call their canted blocking feature here. You can see this mounting point for the clip is a lot thinner than this one. This helps reduce this sort of canted effect that you can already see. This is roughly level, but when we level on the belt with the canted blocking, you're already getting a benefit of a wing before the wing actually engages. This definitely helps improve your concealment, and I'm interested to see how this feature goes. It is patent pending from A&I Manufacturing, and it is the first time I've seen something like this on a holster. Trying it out on a belt real quick just to see how these clips interface. Again, this is my typical core belt that I've been EDCing for the last 
I don't know, quite a while. You can see that there's plenty of room in the clips for it to fit nice and snug on something like a core belt. So if you have something similar, it'll definitely fit. There might be just a smidge more room up top if you have a taller belt, but they do make several different clips from discrete carry concepts that A&I does offer. So if this isn't quite the right fit, you can get clips that do fit what you have. Again, this is sort of what I mean when you can see about the double J hook. If I was holding this belt, and try to pull this up, that little clip is interfacing with the bottom of the belt and this will not come up and just slide out from under these clips here. Definitely an important feature to have and it does look like it'll work quite well. If someone were trying to pull this off, it's not just gonna slide out from under these springy clips. Holds it in place pretty well and it's also supposed to work decently at holding the holster to fabric. Of course, the belt's always recommended, but that's something I might try in case you're in an office and maybe you wanna tuck these behind your belt or something like that. Interesting nevertheless, but I'll probably be carrying this with the belt more often than not. These little tabs up front just help you lift the little teeth out of the way so you can pull this off your belt and they go. So there's definitely no worry about any springiness or retention issues with these clips. They are springy and they snap back, but there's plenty of resistance there to keep it on your belt. Not going to be worried about that at all. Overall though, the clips look pretty good. Moving on from there to the concealment wing, it looks pretty standard compared to some other things that I've seen. It does come with a stock block here. And this additional one that you can see here, which is a little bit thicker in case you're wanting a little bit more push of that grip. And I think the larger your firearm is that you can carry, the more useful this particular piece is gonna be. There's a single bolt through the middle of it here, or a screw that'll hold this in place. So it'll be a pretty simple change out. And I might try it with both of these just to see which one I like the best. But again, as I'm thinking about it, the smaller your firearm, you probably won't need as tall of a wedge because your grip is not as long and you don't need as much printing help. So this will push it in maybe that much. This one will push it even further in. It's important to find a balance between comfort, concealment, and also you know, accessibility to the firearm itself. If this is too close to your body, you won't be able to grab it. But the option of this little wing extension is nice to have. Glad they put it in there. But going on from the wing, of course, you do have your two retention adjustment screws. I'll probably loosen this just a hair because it's pretty stiff right now but it does fit beautifully. Again, you can see it is optics compatible and accommodates suppressor height sights here with these Trigicons and the hollow sun. Plenty of real estate up here for an optic to sit. And the end is of course open if you have a threaded barrel that pokes out a little bit more, maybe even a compensator. But overall the fit is phenomenal. They do look to be a nice quality piece of Kydex that fits pretty well. And I do have high hopes for this wedge here, but it's very interesting that they just put it in already built into the holster one piece. You don't have to worry about it sliding off or anything like that. And that is definitely something I can appreciate. There's lots of interesting and innovative features on these holsters from A&I that I just haven't seen before. If it's anything that I can appreciate, it's definitely new thinking, new ideas, and continuous improvement of a product and a concept that's as simple as a Kydex pistol holster. Of course, I'll be comparing it with the regular version that does not have the built-in wedge. Again, this is the exact same holster, functionally identical, minus the wedge on the back of this option, which is available on certain weapon systems, but this is just the plain one that you'll get. Maybe if you don't like a rigid wedge here, there's still plenty of room for something softer like the tier one concealed foam wedges on this. Moving on from the actual pistol holsters, we do have this little mag caddy. Again, it has plenty of little holes, different mounting solutions for other clips. Again, these are designed for the discrete carry concepts series of clips. And you can see this clip is more or less just a singular version of what we have here from the mono block on the big holster. It's got the same barb, same spring steel, two access holes for screws, and these hole patterns, you can basically lock it in this bottom one and pivot to be canted vertical or canted the other way based on which hand you're using and how you like your mags to face. This sits in a belt like this. I like to have my rounds pointing towards the gun so I can grab the magazine like this. So that's how it would fit on a belt. Speaking of the belt, I'll try this on here as well. This clip is actually noticeably tighter on the core belt than the last set on the belt. This is probably an added benefit because there's only one clip here holding this to you. So it can wiggle just a hair more, but it's significantly harder to do so. When this is pressed up against your body, you probably won't have any issues. Now we'll put the belt on like I'm actually wearing it and see how it clamps on over top of everything. Again, I carry like this with this small buckle off to my side. So the magazine would go somewhere over here. That fits on there quite nicely. Again, this is surprisingly tight on the belt here. It's definitely not going anywhere. Then we'll just take uh, the wedge version for right now. Get those in there, clamp that on like this. Now, if it's like my tier one concealed holster, these will be very close together. Something like that. Put this in here, something like this. 
There is a lot more space in between here, but when you put it up like this, it very closely resembles the size and footprint of something like a built-in combination system. There's nothing joining the two in the middle, so they do move around a bit more. That also means you can be freer to space these from side to side. This could be an added benefit if you like to carry a strong side three o'clock or six o'clock, but still have an additional mag. You can carry it something, you know, more like this type setup or even at six o'clock. And these clips here in this holster, I think would be a very good fit for that application. And again, over the coming months, I'll be testing this setup and these pieces of gear in my EDC carry and also getting some use at the range to see how they perform in practice. But overall, just from some first impressions, the products looked up coming out very clean, very well made, very tight tolerances, and lots of cool features that you just don't see on every other holster out there. Thanks again to A&I for sending these out. Looking forward to giving them some use. Well, that looks like it's going to be it for the video today, guys, on some first impressions and a general overview of the features of some of the holsters that A&I Manufacturing was kind enough to send us. They sent me a couple different appendix inside waistband holsters for my Glock 19 here, one regular model and one with a built-in concealment wedge that I'm interested to learn about. And they also sent us one of their low profile EDC concealed mag carriers that you can see here to round out the setup. Overall, the fit of their products does seem to be top notch and they do say in their specs that they design their holsters to fit within one thousandth of an inch of the factory firearm specs. And I gotta say, I don't see why I wouldn't believe them. The fit is again top notch, good solid retention click. They're not nearly as expensive as something like a tier one concealed holster. But they do seem to have that quality material and manufacturing behind it. Of course, we'll remain unbiased and honest in all of our testing going forward, and we'll be sure to put out an update video a couple months down the road once we have some time using these products day to day and at the range. And again, I'd like to thank A&I Manufacturing for sending these out to us and giving us the opportunity to test some of their products. We're happy to do it, and we love doing this kind of thing on the channel. So thanks, guys, for sending this out. We do appreciate it. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like down below. And if you have any questions about A&I Manufacturing, some of the features on this holster, or anything like that, definitely leave them down below. We'd be happy to answer any questions and even update you down in the comments as we go along. Always love to hear from you guys. Please comment away. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel where every day is range day. Thank you for watching.